Hey everybody, it's Christian Buckley doing another MVP Buzz Chat, and I'm talking today with Haley. Hello. Hi, thanks for having me. It's great to have you. It's great to talk to somebody from uh, Seattle area. I miss it a lot. I miss it. My wife does not miss it. She's like, no, she likes the warm weather again. Be oh, it's warm right now. Yeah, and it's not the same kind of warm. It's like, well, for so I love it, and and this is too freaking hot here, so... That's the difference where she loves this and it's always too cold there. I could see that. I could see that. It's not for everybody. That's for sure. Yeah. So for folks that don't know you, Haley, who are you, where are you and what do you do? Yeah. So um, I'm Haley Phillips. I'm a systems engineer um, at a really wonderful gaming company. If you look me up, you'll know what company that is. Um, But my primary focus is um, in the Intune space. Um, I do a lot of device management for my company. Um, I manage servers, I manage Windows workstations, I manage applications, I kind of do it all. And so that's um, how I'm in the space. When I saw the company you're working for, I just assumed you were driving around the Seattle area with your phone, looking for doing quality assurance testing. I do do that quite a bit. (laughs) <laughs> I do do that quite a bit. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I have to say that I, you know, like I, I'm, I'm uh, I know it's all ages, but I'll say that my, my kids were really into it when it was first launched and I did it a few times. Cause we used to do um, geocaching, which we got really into, like, it's a lot of fun to go and do that. And I, it just kind of reminded me of, of that. If, if you don't know what we're talking about, wow, how old are you? I mean, come on people. <laughs> you know, use your phone to, to go around to different things like geocaching, find it. Yeah. Yep. Anyway. <laughs> well, very cool. Well, I always like to ask like about that, like your origin story, because you are a brand spanking new MVP. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. You're, you're not having yet, like we're going through the whole renewal process right now. So that'll be nerve wracking experience next year. But what was your experience? How did you find out about the program? How did you get into it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, So uh, my whole entire career progression has kind of been an accident. Like my bachelor's degree is in business management. My IT experience was just being the person that could fix everyone's computers. I didn't really know what I was doing. I just kind of would tinker around with it and be like, oh, here, this is fixed. Um, So at my job before this, um, the beginning of COVID, we had gotten a grant from Microsoft to um, rebuild um, configuration manager and build Intune. And so we had a um, contract with CDW and that's how I kind of got my exposure to the Intune community and start. And I was exposed to community blogs and then um, realized that there was a whole space of MVPs that was specifically around endpoint mobility at that time, um, what that MVP space was called. So um, I really just read every single blog, watched every YouTube video and started using a bunch of the community tools. Like um, I used Donna Ryan's uh, Wimwitch and it was fantastic, made my life so much easier. I used Maurice Daly's um, driver automation tools. So I just really became a big fan of the community. And then um, I finally got to meet the community. Uh, I went to Midwest Management Summit uh, last year and got to talk to all of these people and just thank them for the contribution that they made to the community and how much it had impacted my career. And um, I just kind of expressed interest in wanting to give back to the community once um, I had something to share. And so I just kind of was active on Twitter and tried to respond to people. And then uh, there was a call for sessions for MMS. Um, there were for um social uh, happy hour sessions. Mm -hmm. And so I just threw my name out to talk about what I had done with Azure Arc and patching servers. Um, And my session was picked. And so then I presented and I was really shocked at the level of support that I received. I mean, everyone that I had met at MMS has always been um, incredibly encouraging and helpful, but they were even more encouraging to like come back into the space and contribute more. And so that was kind of my intro into being an MVP. Yeah. 
You know, it, it, it's funny. I, there are, um, we get the question a lot. I, so I, I co-founded a mentoring group for people that want to become MVPs and find out more, ask questions kind of stuff. And, um, you know, one of those things is that uh, I know a lot of people are deathly afraid of presenting. Uh, I mean, it's not easy when you're, you're new at it to go in there. And uh, especially if you, it, it, you know, there's a lot of, uh, what is it called? It's the, uh, um, um, where, where you, you, you feel like you're not an, an expert enough of an expert. You're like, it's the imposter yeah. syndrome. That's, imposter it, that's syndrome. it. Yeah. Am you I know? even good enough to be an imposter? <laughs> right. And it's, and you know, but that's like folks watching, if you're interested, I mean, it, it's that you kind of missed the point. It's not that you're an expert. It's one of the reasons I always loved in the workplace, like doing brown bag sessions. It doesn't have to be a completed, finished, polished, expert thing sometimes like here's what i'm working on where this is the problem we're trying to solve here's how we're going about it and sometimes just like getting the feedback of other people today did you think about this did you try this or i did this that might integrate with that this might be a good you know. anyway it's it's just a great innovation experience of course you get that experience being up at front you're trying you're giving back to the community and it can lead to other things obviously yeah you know, like you've done it it's led to other things but there, almost every major conference um, or minor conference, regional conferences, everybody does it. We always do it with our Utah. Uh, we did our Collab Days Utah a few months back. Um, we always give preference to you know people that are first time presenting and want to, want to do that. Like, we will help you. We'll coach you. We'll review your slides. You can demo for us, whatever it is. Like, we'll help you do that because we, we need new blood. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, it, I've been really, I mean, I already knew that the community was very welcoming, but when I finally kind of raised my hand and said that I was ready to finally contribute, because I was concerned about not being enough of an expert to have anything to share, but also reminding myself that, you know, I remember at the beginning when I didn't know anything and being able to have somebody who can kind of give you a starting place is really, really helpful and really invaluable. So I... So I'm sure since you just in the week and a half week that you've uh, announced that you have your MVP, I'm sure people have come forward and asked you like, you know, like, how can I, what, what can I do? Uh, what's the kind of advice that you give for people that are interested? Yeah. Um, I would say the number one thing is to just be willing to speak up and say like, I've also had that issue. And provide solutions or, hey, this is how I figure this out, or, hey, this is how um, I've rethought this um, scenario or this question and contribute to the conversation with kind of like a yes and mindset and not mm -hmm. just being, um, it, you know, change is hard for all of us and really challenging, but the amount of people that are excited to embrace that change, like that really makes all the difference. And if you're one of those people who's excited to embrace the change, that really just speaks volumes and really continues to drive the community forward. One of the hardest things for people, I, I mean, I struggled with this for, for a while, uh, for a few years, but is, you know, um, surfacing the things that could be qualify as a contribution as part of this, you know, part mm -hmm. of this process. Uh, and, and so sometimes it's just, it, it's hard. Like, how do you, um, how do you kind of, uh, you know, uh, surface those contributions? How do you, I always phrase it as, you know, how do you ring your own bell? Like, hey, look what I did without looking like a, just a jerk. Like, hey, look at me. You know, you want to, you want to find that, that balance. And one of the things that I did was just starting to, on a monthly basis, going back through, like, what did I do over the past month? And then collecting a list. And sometimes it's easy. Like, you know, I write about, music and other life things once in a while rarely once or twice a year politics but otherwise it's all about technology and so all of those i'll say of these here's the articles i wrote here's videos that i did here's a podcast that i did here's i i this presentation but you know start building those those things up and i, I wouldn't say like oh, i had this email a conversation with this customer like no you might say like with the social activities, like in this past month, I answered, you know, 14 questions that were asked out on Twitter or whatever, whatever it is. Um, but start to collect those. And I think you'd be surprised at how quickly it adds up. And that's one of the questions, part of the process. If you're, 
interested in becoming an MVP or someone takes notice and reaches out and said, Hey, have you thought about becoming an MVP? Having that list of accomplishments at the very least, you could take it to your boss and say, Hey, I'm ready for that raise. Cause look what I've been mm -hmm. doing over and above. But it's, uh, I, so I don't know if you had a difficult time with kind of collecting, like, what have I done in the last year? It's funny that you mentioned that. That was something that um, I had to talk to a few of my friends and like peers because I kind of felt like my contributions were definitely not enough. Um, but going to like local user groups and speaking mm -hmm. up there and like, you know, I've now presented at a couple of um, user groups and that has made tremendous um that's helped me tremendously in like those contributions and yeah. now it kind of helps give more ideas of more ways that I can contribute to the community like you know um, I'm going to be presenting at my local um, user group in two weeks and one of the ideas that I have of what I'm presenting on is because of pain points that I've heard from the community and just thinking well nobody else is really talking about this about this specific use case that's something that I could spend some time on and see if it works and then present on it to give people another option. It's not the only option, but try it on, see if it works for you. And then at the very least, I've gone through all of the headache of getting this configured and set up, and then I'll write a blog post for you and here you go. So that's kind of the attitude that I've tried to take is just noticing what issues people are running into because at least in the Intune space, so many of us are running into the exact same issues. Yeah. Um, businesses all have very similar pain points. It's it's amazing sometimes I see, because I do uh, one of the uh, series that I do with a bunch of other friends in the space, we do these AMAs. Mm -hmm. And so we get you know actual community questions that are out there. And some of them, it's funny, you get snarky responses from people that are other experts and MVPs, like, what a stupid question. I'm like, hey, we didn't pose it. Somebody asked, it's a valid question. Mm -hmm. It's basic to us, but they didn't know. And, right. uh, and, but sometimes with seemingly basic questions, I'm shocked, like going and searching, like, well, there's got to be somebody did a walkthrough on this and find like, no, and the documentation bad. And one of my favorite scenarios to solve is when you go into like tech community or any other forums and you find dozens of people asking the question and the Microsoft people want to take it off, like take it offline, like file a ticket, come through. And then there's no response. Yeah. Like share it out loud, Microsoft. What are you doing? Yeah. Like yeah. They, people have asked it in a public forum, answer it in a public forum. Yeah. It, anyway, I, yeah, obviously it, it, it gets me a bit overheated. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> no, it's it's understandable. It's like we all have very similar um, goals that we're trying to address. And especially to your point, I've seen so many forums where people have the exact same question over and over and over and over. And it's like, if you take it offline, that robs so many other people from getting yeah. this issue addressed. Well, that's one of those things where I, if it, I mean, honestly, if I wanted to uh, uh, just write content based off of that, like go find really unanswered questions out there, find these dead end links of all of these old, you know, these non responses from Microsoft and start answering those questions, find it, create the path. It's, it's funny, they did sometimes and I caught myself where I then went and answered it here, but then didn't go back and put the answer like, hey, we created this video, we had a panel, we discussed this, five of us, here's the solution and do that. I need I need to get better at doing that as well. Uh, yeah. But yeah, that's, I mean, again, that, there's a lot of opportunity out there for somebody that if you want to figure out how do I get involved, how do I give back to the community, that's a great place to go. The forums start there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, and it also, just the amount of things of looking at your own day-to-day -day management. All right, what are the things that are pain points for me that I keep running into? How am I solving it? Or what are questions that colleagues have of me? Um, those are things that I try to jot down to use later. Um, so that has helped tremendously. Yeah. Uh, how good are you also at... Um like at mentioning and stuff where you solve, like recognizing others doing like the, doing the cross pollination with other people's blogs and videos and that kind of stuff. Is that something that you do? Oh yeah, absolutely. No, um, I'm a, a big proponent of, um, 
like for instance, the talk that I'm going to be doing in two weeks, that was a culmination of so many other MVPs talking about one little thing and then me recognizing, oh, this is something that's going to work specifically for my use case. Absolutely. You have to shout out those people. And like, if you use someone's script or even if it was inspired by it, like shout them out because they spent all of those hours doing that. And now you were able to see an example that then sparked uh, an improvement. Yeah. So I think that gratitude is huge. Um, I definitely wouldn't be anywhere that I am without all of the help that other people have posted. So well, that's that is kind of my point too. Is that it, it, by doing that, um, especially if you are including the work and recognizing MVPs and Microsoft people that are doing things to the community, because there are still are Microsoft people that do a lot of community okay. activities. Uh, it's, it's not as many as there should be in doing community stuff, but uh, you know, again, depending on changing roles, but. Um, recognizing them, it's a great way then to get yourself recognized because everybody likes it when, if somebody goes and, I mean, I love it when somebody says, oh, I read this article or I saw you present on this topic and that inspired me to go do this. Like, I love that feedback and, you know, um, checks or cash are also accepted, but I, it's it's not necessary. <laughs> yeah. Well, and to that point, everyone who's contributing to the community, I mean, they're doing this for free. They're doing this yeah. out of the passion for technology and passion for people and so showing a little bit of gratitude goes such a long way like yeah. for instance um even the talk that i did at mms um adam gross who has uh, been in the mvp space for quite a while i mean he was the entire reason that i even threw my name in the ring because um i had been reading his blog for years and then um when i met him at mms in 2023 to your point earlier um, I was talking about a very specific use case that I was having that was bothering me and I couldn't quite find the answer to. And his question was, why are you making this so complicated? Why are you so stuck in the weeds about this? And that like sat in my brain all year long. And so every time that I would come into an issue, I was like, am I just too in the weeds? And like, let's take a step back. And that helped me tremendously. So then, of course, he was the first person that I asked if he would present with me because I just really appreciated the amount of um, effort that he put into the community. And like, this is a very thankless area yeah. um, and it makes such a huge impact for people. Well, you just named another great strategy again to get recognized is that go reach out to an MVP that you really like, like their content and say, hey, I have an idea for this. Would you be interested in co-presenting with me somewhere at a user group? I mean, it doesn't have to be huge, but go and create that content, work with them together. And, you know, again, it's about building relationships. That's how you start to get recognized and they are aware of you of the things that you're doing and start contributing. So, yeah, ab yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's the whole, um, when I started out as a um, service desk person and then became an engineer, the whole reason that I even got to where I was is I was constantly asking to do more and more work of the next person. Like, Hey, I know you're really busy. Um, can I do this? Can you double check my work and make sure that I did everything? And then with your permissions, like sign off on it. So that way um, I was learning the next thing. And I mean, who doesn't want help with their workload? Who doesn't right. want someone who's willing to hold themselves accountable and wants to show up and wants to make a difference? Like right. that's, that's huge. I'm, I have helped us folks that want to do the same thing. And I mean, I will help them absolutely endlessly. Like I will stay up late on my own time to answer the question that they had, because I remember people doing that for me. Yeah. No, that's a great point. Well, it's, I mean, so much of this is, uh, you know, I hear uh, again and again within the sub community, the Microsoft ecosystem that I, I'm in about, it's the greatest tech community in the world is like, yeah, and the power platform people, the collaboration people think that they're the best. I mean, this, a lot of our community was modeled after the SQL community, which was around a lot longer. And you've got the Intune community. You've got the, I mean, the config manager you know, sub community is part of that. Um, the Windows community, like all of those uh, around there, but it, it all comes back to the same. And I've, I actually have been around long enough that I worked I worked with IBM years ago and was with Rational Software, which I'm sure you don't know, but um, got acquired by IBM. And but like the, the communities around the tech communities around those, um, it, it, the overwhelmingly the people that are within them that are active are some of the most approachable. They want to help you solve problems. They would like to connect. They would love to promote somebody other uh, somebody else that's ambitious, smart, has ideas 
know, different perspective around that. And it, what it takes is you stepping up and say, raising your hand and say, Hey, I'm interested in participating. This is what I'm bringing to the table. And, uh, but you've got to say something, you've got to speak up. Yeah. Um, And humility goes so, so, so far because that I think is probably the number one is just having humility and being hardworking um, because everybody wants to help somebody who's humble. Right. Well, in life, I need a lot of help and I'm one of the most humble people I know. So, (laughs) Uh, yeah, well, Haley, I really appreciate it. It's great getting to know you. It's like, again, we're like, like, I know we've met at one of these events out there. I think we're, we're, uh, we're, we we know a bunch of the same people. So, um, but uh, I miss it out there. Enjoy the beautiful weather. Um, Your two weeks of actual heat that you get every summer. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's great to see you and hopefully we'll see you at MVP summit next spring. Uh, in the meantime, I always like to ask, like, uh, for people that want to get in touch with you, or reach out to you, where are you the most active in the social? Where can people find you? Um, I'm very, uh, at, well, just got back from vacation, so we'll be more active on Twitter, but, um, I respond very quickly to DMS. Um, I'm also on discord. Um, I'm pretty active on the win admins, uh, discord. But um, I would say the number one place to reach me would be on Twitter. Um, my um, handle is always hype with two L's. Um, so, yeah. of course, we'll have the links, everything out on the blog, out on the YouTube, and out on the podcast. So, if you want to reach out to Haley, please do. So, well, thanks a lot, and we'll talk to you soon. Yeah, thank you so much. Wow. Wow.